Oh, hey there. So I'm in my record room. This is the front room of the house. Probably my favorite room in the whole house. And it's where obviously I keep pictures of old local shows that I took or posters that I bought, things like that. And I've been slowly trying to get things up on the wall. We've only been here in this house for a little over seven years now. And I'm finally getting around to putting stuff up on the wall. But one of the things that I really had that I never quite could get up onto the wall is a double album that my friend Jason and I uh, put out for a couple of local bands called Bearlands and Cody Schaefer. So my friend Jason and I started a little record label back in 2012 called Wrong Side of Texas Records. You can look it up. Um, but we released a split album on 12 inch vinyl and I always wanted to mount the record, but I never could get it mounted exactly correctly because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Did a lot of research and figured out exactly how to do it and it started with ordering some special order mat board. So anyway, this video, I'll take you on exactly how I mounted that record and show you the final product here in the record room. All right, so I have these records that my friends recorded. I wanna have them to wear in the frame, you can see them, both covers, and then you can also see both labels. And of course, the mint green vinyl, which was pretty cool. Get all my measurements here, so I want about a two inch overhang, overhang on the, all the way around. So mark that out. And then figure out what my measurement is. I've got all this measured out now. I'll draw some lines, cut out the foam board, and we can go from there. And so the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to trace a line on this foam board. And the line will be important because I'm going to take this double sided foam tape and we're going to basically stick it all the way around the border. And then I've got this transparency film and we'll cut little tabs from the transparency film. So one side of the double sided tape will be on the foam board and then the transparency film will stick on top of the other side and it'll basically hold these things in place so they don't move around. And then we'll test it out. All right. Doesn't slide at all. That's perfect. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, I've got the tabs all the way around. That's not moving. That's not moving. These are in the right spot. And if I lift it up, you can see I put tabs all the way around each record. And then I've got these in the corner here which will help the album covers from shifting around. So now it's uh, just a process of taking this transparency film and we'll cut it down into little strips. That'll be the same width as the tape and overhang like an eighth of an inch, not even a quarter of an inch. It's just enough to kind of hold it down because the mat board will be mounted on top and you won't be able to see all of this stuff or the transparency and it'll hold it down but the transparency film is just to, in case it wants to kind of slip up it's not going to slip up and slide around so that's really all this is for peel that off cut a little tab and then just overlap the record slightly and press it down and again, you're just, I'm just looking for a little overlap that holds that record in place. All right. And there is the record. You can see that it doesn't move around. It's perfect. All right, and that's the last piece. Now, 
Perfect. So then the next thing to do is measure out the mat board back here. I'll trace this onto the mat board, cut the mat board out. Then I have this mat board cutter with a, uh, this tool that kind of plunges a razor down and it cuts the mat board at an angle so you can see that little bevel, 45 bevel. So I've got this little made by Logan. It's a circle slash oval cutter, uh, mat cutter. And as you can see here, I tested uh, the circles on a scrap piece to make sure. And it basically will cut a bevel on the mat board in a circle that'll go around the record and when I drop the blank on there that we cut out, it's perfect. It's just about an eighth to three sixteenths all the way around the record, which is going to be perfect, which means the mat board will overhang that amount, obviously. So in order to cut this out, I measured in from the edge of the, the foam board and then the same thing down from this mat board. And then I'll do it same thing on this side. And then once I get that measurement, set this to the side now. And what I want to do is measure in from the edge of the mat board. Mark, make a couple of hash marks. And then I'm going to basically draw a cross in the middle. And then I know you can't really see this, but there's these little nibs on the circle itself. And you basically line those up on the line. And that'll be make sure that this pivot point is directly in the middle. And then there's this little pivoting head that's got this little cutter. And when you drop it down, it drops the blade and pull it up, pulls it out of the way. Seven and 15 sixteenths, couple of hash marks. Put the ruler, drew that line, did the same thing, adjusted it to eight and eight. Did it here, here, bottom, bottom, got that line. So now I know that is exactly in the center of that record and it's the same on both sides. And of course, the easy way to check this is to do it on the other side too. And my line is directly in the middle. Perfect. So then again, set this here. And then all that. And again, these are exactly in the center of each record, these points. Okay, here goes nothing. I've tested it, I'm pretty confident. And this little thing has these little pins that stick into the mat board to hold it in place. So I'll line all of these. But once I get it lined up, then you just press down. Every single one is on a line. Okay, here goes nothing. So I'm gonna pull this cutter over here. I'm gonna lower the blade and I'm gonna cut. And there we go. Cut it at a bevel. You can see that little 45-ish bevel all the way around. And it worked. Let's cut this other side. Okay, got it. Oh, buddy, perfect. So then I'll mark out where I want the cover and I'll cut that with the straight cutter. All right, so I know it's hard to see. Heck, it's even hard for me to see, but I basically, I measured where the album cover comes up. So you can kind of see this line maybe on camera. 
but um, I measured down from and up from each side. And I've got a line and this little bevel cutter is going to cut this mat board up at an angle that way. So I've lined it up on the line here and here, and I've got this extended out, which is where I want my cut to stop because there's a little notch here on this cutter that tells me where I need to stop my cut. So let me just cut this. And I'll start on the line and that notch, plunge down. And you can't see it yet, but there's a cut there and a cut there. All right, so I had to take this metal piece off because this was not deep enough to allow this to go all the way in because of the way this cutter cuts at this angle this way. I went ahead and marked out my lines, clamped this down. This is where I wanna stop these lines here, which is marked by this notch and this. All right, if I did this right. Looks like we're free on both sides. Beautiful. All right, so that part's finished. Now that I've got all of this cut out and mounted, get all this cleaned up a little bit. And then all I have to do is take that walnut and maple back there and build a frame. All right, so hopefully this little video was helpful. I searched all over the interwebs trying to find a video or instructional what have you to explain just how to mount, quote, an extra large record, i.e. a double slash 12 inch split LP like this one. And I really couldn't find one anywhere. So dare I say, this is the world's first video on how to complete such a task. Sure, I'll say it. So there you have it, a world exclusive look at a custom mounting of a split 12 inch LP. Oh, and I did skip over the making of the frame part, but that's only because I made a video last year where I went into detail on how to make professional frames. And I made this one out of walnut with maple splines in the exact same way I did in that video. So check it out maybe as part two of this video to get the complete process. Also links to all the tools I used in the description below. And as always, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. And don't forget to leave me comments down in the comment section below to let me know what you did or did not like about the video because constructive feedback is always appreciated. So see you on the next one.